Welcome back to the third video for the missing tutorial. Reading JavaScript, I want to make sure that you have a basic understanding about how to read JavaScript. And of course, I can't teach you all there is to know about how to read JavaScript and how to write it. Um, mainly this video is about becoming acquainted, therefore reading. So I have a little addendum here, functional style. In my code, I write what's called a functional style, so we will be learning how functions work, and they have scope, and we'll also learn about those basic data types and how they operate in JavaScript. Let's get started. Here's what we need to get started. Open up your browser, and on the left side, you can see I'm just here at DuckDuckGo, just a simple site. And what I've done is I've opened up what's called the Element Inspector tool that's in most major browsers. I'm using Chrome. Firefox will be very similar. I believe even Opera, Safari have these as well. But uh, if you want it to follow along so that it looks very similar, I recommend uh, using the Chrome browser here. I also have the rep map code over here, which we're going to get to. But again, we're not going to focus our energy quite here yet, um, but I'm going to have it here for a second for reference later in the video. What we need right now, though, is this window and this element inspector tool open. So I just closed it right now, and I'll show you how to do that. You just right click and go to not view page source, but this inspect, select that. And yours might actually pop up on this right pane side, but it also might have popped up down here. It doesn't matter. There are ways to switch where you want it to be, but I won't cover that here. It also will have other windows open um, and more visible. So I have the console open up right now. If that's not open for you, you can click on this button and it should pop open. There might even be messages in there if you've never used it before um, it, that you can possibly close. You can close those. But here's what this element inspector is. This is HTML for the, for the page. This is all the CSS code for that page. We, we're not going to be concerned with that because we're actually doing a little thing about JavaScript. So we can write JavaScript in this console. And that's what I'm going to be doing, is just showing you some basics. Okay, let's talk about some data types. There are a few that you should be aware of when you're reading JavaScript. And you can store data in what are called variables. So you might have seen code in the past. If you have some experience with in JavaScript, you can type out a key uh, phrase, VAR. That's a key word that the JavaScript programming languages is, is recognizes as, oh, you're trying to what's called instantiate a variable, meaning I'm going to store this in memory. I'm going to store something, and you can give it a name of some kind. So let's talk about strings. I'm going to make a string. A string is essentially uh, some kind of literal form of text of some sort, whether it's in numbers or um, um, alphabetic characters or any other kind of character in any written language. So I can say assign to string variable, that's what the equal signs mean, that's what that means. To make a string, you put something inside of quotation marks. Okay, let's just say um, string, literal. Maybe I'll just put in some numbers, one, two, three, you put some commas there. All of that will be this is a literal string right here that I can do lots of things to, which we won't denote uh, here in the video. But if I want to close this statement, this variable statement, I'm going to do a semicolon. And now I'm going to press Enter. And yes, it did say undefined, but um, check it out. If I write the variable name string, And you can see already it's got a ghostly <laughs> uh, image of what I defined before. If I press enter, it prints it out for me in the console. I can also do what's called a console log, even though I'm in the console. 
and type out string inside of that log, semicolon to close it, it printed out the string. And notice how in this case, before when I typed out string, enter, it has quotations marks around it. That suggests, oh, this is a string <clears throat> in the console log, and I typed in the variable name string, it actually just prints out the string literal itself. So those are strings. What are some other variable and data types? Oh, okay, let's make some integers. Integers, okay. I'm gonna assign to this integers keyword, just a number, so without quotations. So let's just do one. And now if I type in integers, oops, then I get the number one. Um, if I'm more on the nose, I can do the following. One, assign to one, the actual number one. And then let's do var two, assign the number two. Those are integers. So now what if happens when I type out two? I get two, one, I get one in the console, so now I can actually do something where I, I can add them because it's a programming language. So I can type out like a, a statement like this and express expression one plus two using those variable names. And it'll assume that I'm doing a statement of adding them together since they are integers. If I try to do that with strings, it won't work. So let's do this one string equals one, two string, or I'm sorry, assigned, we're going to assign to that, we should use consistent language, okay, now what happens if I try to add those together, let's see here, one string, two string, what's going to happen? <laughs> JavaScript did something funny there. It makes it look like, right, the, the way I typed it, that it somehow got some funky math, but that's not what happened, right? It actually combined those two strings. It's called concatenation. So that's another fancy word. Um, so when you use the plus sign in different contexts, whether you're using strings versus, let's say, numbers like integers, it's going to do different things. So even though it looked like it did funky math, one plus two is 12, what? No, no it just combined the string one and the string two. Okay, so those are strings and integers and then also some computational work that can help you maybe see what's happening inside JavaScript. There's other types of numbers. You can add decimals, they're called floats. We won't work with those here, um, but there's, there is a difference. Let's talk about those arrays again. Remember arrays? They're lists. So let's make an array here. I'm going to type. Actually, I should. I mean, I've been typing Python lately, so let's not do that underscore. I've been doing that. Uh, in JavaScript, it might look more something like this. <clears throat> array example. Let's assign this. I can instantiate an array, array example. And it's, right now, it's going to be empty. So now if I typed if I type in array example, it shows me, okay, you got a, a you've typed an empty array here. See how it says even there's a, a method length attached to it? And there's all this other stuff. Do you notice how you get all this? It seems like what why would I even need to know all this? These are all methods that the programming language of JavaScript has in relationship to this data type of array. So I can use all of these to, um, essentially, I could use for each to uh, uh, traverse the entire um, array to search for something or do something to it for each item in there. I can also push new items to it. So actually, that's what I want to do, because I, I don't like that it's a length zero. So let's do this. Let's say array example dot length, okay, let's do that first, length, you notice we get zero. Now let's add something to it. Remember that push? Push means append, 
add something. So let's add an item to it. Let's add um, a string. And let's see, we can add something else. Let's add the number one, the integer one. Okay, why did it print out two? You might be wondering. That's the length. In the console here, it just assumes, it just does that. So if I type in this, it says we got two items in there. Um, if I wanted to find out, let's see here, just what's inside of it, print it out. I just type in the actual name and check it out. Now we have two items. We have a string of string. And then separated with a comma, another item in the array list is the integer one. So that's how you create an array. And inside of a list, you can create lots of things. Usually it's more meaningful, like it, an array list suggests it's some kind of set of values that make sense to put together. Um, but this is just me showing you that lots of things can go inside of it. Finally, I wanna show you one last um, data type that should be familiar because of our past uh, the video number two about data are the object arrays which are also sometimes called dictionaries because they have keys and values. So instead of the square brackets we're going to let's see object array assign to it let's just make an empty one let's call it instantiate so um, I've created this variable Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that, did I? Bar keyword there. There, now I have an empty object array and I'm gonna add something to it now. Similarly to the array list, you can look at the object itself and a lot of the properties, including things like you might notice here, the length um, and the name of it, um, different things you can peruse try to understand. It gives you uh, actually a lot of great keywords to type into the search engines if you want to learn more about something, um, if you don't have the language and you're trying to cultivate it, and you're reading a tutorial or a book about JavaScript, etc, etc. So it, it's intimidating right now, so we're going to close it up, and I just want to show you how to add something to an object array. So in this case, easily. Uh, you, you can do it more programmatically when you learn how to write different kinds of functions and loops, conditionals, etc. But for now, what we can do to add to this object array is type it out. So now it's I've you know called it up. It knows what it recognizes it, but I can use dot notation like this to actually construct some kind of object inside of this um, object array. So let's see, let's do just the keyword example. So remember keys. So I've given it a key with the name example. I'm going to assign to that key of a name of some kind. So example value There's a string there. I'm going to close that expression, that statement. And I'm going to press enter, and it gave me the output. So now, what happens if I type object array? Check it out. We have now inside of it a key value pair, key example, value, a string literal example that says example value. Uh, we can add another one. Let's see here. Let's add object array dot. Um, let's do keyword number. Or maybe how about this? Int for integer equals. Let's give it a value now. This key has a value. Let's see. How about actually an array of integers? So one, two, three, four. Boom. So let's print that out. Check it out. We have now two objects in this object array. We have an example key with a string and now an int key with a 
list an, an array of integers. And I can do, the, do, do things to those now in JavaScript. I can iterate over them. I can add more things, take things out, rearrange them, um, reassign new uh, uh, values to those keys. Lots of things. That's what programming languages do. They enable you to revise, if you will, and reorganize, categorize, um, write, and read at scale. So this has just been the basics of different data types and just some quick and simple ways to add things to them so that when we get to the JavaScript code on the right, we will not be uh, totally confused. We can, you can follow along sequence by sequence. The last thing I want to show you is how to read functions and tell you about what's called scope because that's going to be really important when we get over to this side here. So let's set it up. Why is that important? You see these different uh, values in the code editor right here. We have get data and inside of that or next to it we have parentheses. What that says is call this function. You see these different three different functions my script for the data viz, if we go over here for this data viz, is actually three different functions. I get the data, I format it, and then I I call it just called it paint data viz. So that's just you know tell you that well that's where we're going to have some data viz work with the D3 library. But before I even got to the D3 library and how to paint it to the browser. I had to format it. So in the next part here I'm going to show you how to read functions. What are what what is scope? Meaning if I open this up, you can see how it, it the line numbers move from 91 to 223. That means there's stuff inside of there. And there's a lot that we're going to walk through. And we see all these curly braces. Um, those are defining scope. So different parts of this broader function called format data. I can actually simplify it here real quick to show you that we actually start the scope here on 91 and this function ends down here on line 222 where we even see a semicolon saying this function is closed. This entire function is closed. So how do we read that? Let's take a look. Okay, before we learned about different data types, but in the context of the JavaScript programming language, we learned about string literals, um, we learned about integers, we learned about arrays and object arrays within the context of writing them out and assigning them to a variable. So we give it a variable, a keyword name, and then we use that equal sign to assign a particular data type to that keyword variable in memory. In this part, I'm going to review functions because functions are a big part of JavaScript. It's not everything there is to know about JavaScript by any means, but I wrote my JavaScript code in a functional style, if you will. Some might argue not the greatest functional style, but again, uh, the context of this is to teach people how to read this stuff. So I've written my code in a certain way, so that's my little, little disclaimer there. But let's learn about how functions work, how it relies on this idea of scope, and you have to call it, give it what are called arguments, and then um, pass parameters into that function to then use and do something to. So it's a way for you to actually create and manipulate, maybe that's not the best word, but remember how I said in programming languages you can write and revise, you can reorganize. Functions are the big idea, maybe even little idea, is that functions are little workers, if you will, that do one thing well. You can nest functions within functions in JavaScript, but you don't obviously want to nest too many things in one thing. So the idea is that if you're going to do a, an action repeatedly, you might as well create a function that can do that for you. So let's begin. This is a great resource by uh, Wes Bose. I, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I apologize if not. Uh, but if you want to learn more, 
about JavaScript and web development. He's actually a really great person to follow and has done a lot of things with Mozilla uh, Foundation to create a lot of tutorials for people out there. And I thought this was great because it shows the scope in all the different pieces of a function, of a simple function. So even though it's not connected to my code, I thought this is a really great resource to review and a chance for me to even share a person to follow. What's going on here? What we see going on in this case is that Wes has defined a function. Here at the top, we have a function definition. And we can see how it has encompasses this whole idea here where we have the keyword function, we give that function a name, so that way, if you don't give it a name, it's called an anonymous function, uh, which can be called, but you definitely want to document your code, if you will, by giving your function a name so that people know what it's supposed to do, you know what it's gonna do. In this case, it's gonna calculate a bill. So let's take a look at the parameters Parameters are things you pass and use and you know you're going to be using inside the function to uh, essentially input data to then be able to output it. So let's see what's going on here. We have a parameter named meal and then a tax rate with an assigned value of looks like 5%. So we have two parameters that are passed into this function, we assume they're gonna be used in some way. And note, oh, I'll talk about that in a second. Note here, we have next uh, curly braces that suggest this is where this function starts. And here at the bottom, this is where it's gonna end. Inside of it, we, we have what's called the body of the function, where you, this is where, again, you can kind of see some relationships between writing and programming already. Um, where inside of this is where we're going to be doing something. So if you're wondering what uh, this means, it's constant. So some kind of constant that you would um, return. Um, I won't get into details, but we have, a, it's essentially a variable, a, spe a special kind of variable that we assign something to. So we have the name total. And look, now we're first using meal. We're going to talk about where that comes from in a second. And this means times, and this gives scope to this right here. It's JavaScript is going to read this and compute it, and then multiply it to whatever the value of meal is. So 1 plus the tax rate. And you notice how, again, what's that? The semicolon? It, it says that's when the expression statement ends. Whenever you have a function, if you're going to be calling it somewhere else, normally you're going to return that value so that you write a return statement. So in this case, you only have one simple thing of total. So you input some value parameters, you compute it, add it to a variable total, and then return that value before the end to wherever you called that this function calculate bill. So that's the part that's missing, right? What's going on? Oh, look down here. We have a variable that we create and we instantiate that we call my total in this case. And we're going to assign it the returned value of calculate bill. And now I'm hoping you see why it's important to name your functions for the most part. There are maybe some specific situations where it's okay not to. But then note here, we have arguments. This is where you can actually have dynamic content passed to your function based on recurrent situations. We're being rhetorical here, right? So in this case, we can see that the order va of these values matter. Um, in this case, we have $100 for the meal. And then in this case, they passed um, a specific tax rate that would override that um, default value that's um, up here. So it would, ins instead of it being 0 0.05, it would be 0 0.13. So this, these values can come from a lot of different places, from other variables that are stored somewhere based on input. 
but in this case they're they're hard coded if you will meaning just to sh for an example let's call calculate bill give it the meal value of 100 and the tax rate of 13% in this case this calculate bill when it's called will go to this function pass as parameters these arguments and then do something to them right here in the body then it'll return it back to this area and assign that value that's returned to my total and boom you have input and output and that's a function that has scope and you can use it in lots of different ways beyond this way and it can be written in many different ways um, that you see then you see here the one thing I'll note that I maybe didn't mention is no, notice how it matters I, I didn't note how the order matters like what you say in what order with regards to calling it but it also matters for documentation the order of use inside the function body I didn't mention that second part so notice how the meal is used first then maybe I'll write one here and then two oh that's ugly sorry and then two tax rate so that's another little um, tiny thing that you don't find quite easily until you start writing it and then things that get thrown errors happen and people complain <laughs> about your code um, that's happened to me in the past so I learned the hard way so hopefully this helps you read functions okay now let's take a quick look here's the functions I got cooking in the data processing code before we actually look at it a little bit more closely um, I have three one two three and so I have a function to get the Google Sheet data that we looked at then I'm processing the data and format data and then the code we're not going to look at, but here's where the data viz work happens here in the paint data viz. So I've separated my concerns. I've said first get the data, make sure that works. And once that works, send it to this that um, data to the format data function. So this very first note here of get data, that data call, notice how get data doesn't have any um, any arguments because I'm just trying to call the function to get the code working inside of this index file itself and that's why that's the case there if we look at inside the code of format data we see a few things happening um, so it just means to get you acquainted before we look at it a little bit more closely and is notice how many variables I name here right uh, up at the top of format data function I can use those variables inside of format data anywhere and so it matters when I assign these variables and it matters then I can't use any of these outside of format data so if I tried to call and use let's say any of these arrays somewhere else outside of format data it'd be like the, the JavaScript would throw an error and say that's that's not instantiated it's because scope protects um, data types and things stored in memory and that matters as well it even gets into security um, I'm not gonna say my code is the most secure either but um, it, it's definitely something to learn about along the way one other thing to mention before we go is how do I go from get data to format data well here it is right here this is just one part of get data but there's a request that I send to uh, Google essentially in this case and if the request that I send to get the data is successful and I get this little message here that's coded as 200 success now I format the data as a JSON object here so here's where I get the response request data I put it in a text format and I parse it as JSON remember JSON objects and I store it under the variable with the keyword data. I'll review this one more time when we get to it, but I want to note here, look, what happens then is I pass that as an argument to format data. So this is just a little warm up <laughs> until we get to the code now. So let's go. Let's start reading the data processing code.